Hi, and welcome back to Rosie STEM. I'm Amanda Jotty, and today we're going to be going through an example of how to conduct a permutation test in Python. So if you haven't seen my video about permutation testing, I'm going to link that right here. We're going to be following up on that video by now doing an example of how you would actually write code to do this in Python, and that should also give you a bit more of a solid understanding of what permutation testing is. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so start as always by importing some libraries. The only libraries we really need for this are NumPy and Pandas. We also need Matplotlib or some sort of plotting library just to make a histogram because it's useful to see what our distributions look like, um, but it's not completely necessary. So I'm going to use this penguins data, which is a data set that's used pretty often for teaching. So there's three different species of penguins that people have conducted different um, body measurements on, and they all live on different islands in Antarctica. So we have the Adelie penguins, the Chinstrap penguins, and the Gentoo penguins. If anyone knows the correct pronunciation of Adelie, please let me know in the comments because I do not. So I apologize if I am butchering it. So this is just a little table that I made using group by that kind of shows some of these measurements across species. And you can see that there are some differences, right? It seems like the Gentoo penguins might be a little bit bigger on average, but they kind of have a smaller Coleman depth. So I want to investigate if there's actually meaningful differences between species and sizes. So the first thing that I'm going to look at is let's investigate if there's a meaningful difference between flipper lengths for Gentoo and Chinstrap penguins. So my null hypothesis is always status quo. So there's no difference in flipper length between Gen 2 and Chinstrap penguins. They're equal to each other. Then there's three possible options for alternative hypotheses, right? You can have the two-sided hypothesis that they're different, but we don't really specify in which direction. And then there's two one-sided tests that we could do looking for different directions, right? Gen 2's being bigger or chin straps being bigger. Based on my data here, it really doesn't look to me like we can support saying that the chin strap penguins have longer flippers than the Gen 2 penguins. So we couldn't really support this one. So I would choose one of the other ones. Let's just choose the other one-sided test for now and say that we're going to look and see if the Gen 2 flipper length is greater than the chin strap flipper length. Okay, so we have our two hypotheses, H0 and HA. That's my null hypothesis and my alternative hypothesis. And you'll notice we are now in a situation where we're comparing two groups. So we've got two different groups, the Gen 2s and the chin straps, and we're comparing their flipper lengths, which means we're in a situation where we can do a permutation test. So we need a test statistic for our permutation test. I'm going to use difference in average flipper length. Now you can use something like the absolute value of the difference if you'd like. It gives you a different looking distribution. So the difference itself looks kind of nicer, it gives you a nice symmetric distribution. So that's why I'm going to use it. But you can come up with any test statistic that you want and it will work. So here's that table again as a reminder. If we want to look at the difference in average flipper length, we can take the mean of the flipper length column for species that are Gen 2, and then subtract the mean of that flipper length column for species that are chin strap. Okay, so that's just taking this one here, this 217, and subtracting this 195, and I end up with about 21. So let's assume the null hypothesis is true. Then, Mixing up the species of the two penguins shouldn't matter. The flipper lengths are not unique to the species. So if I shuffled all of the penguins around and randomly picked two groups, their flipper lengths should be just as different as my chinstrap and gentoo penguins if the null hypothesis is true and there's no real difference there. So 
let's go ahead and calculate some test statistics that come from a world where species doesn't matter, right? And we can create species not mattering by shuffling species, making it to where species isn't actually going to affect anything. So what we do is the first thing is I just create this new data frame, penguin small, that it's just has chinstrap and gen two penguins in it. So I don't have to worry about the third species. Then I get all of the flipper lengths here and all of the species labels here. The next thing I do is I create an empty array that I just named differences. And that's gonna be where I save all of my test statistics so that I can eventually look at the whole distribution. Okay, so now I'm set up to do my simulation. I'm gonna simulate 5,000 times. So I'm gonna get 5,000 null test statistics here. That's what this line does. So I never actually use I in this for loop. This is all just to make sure that I run this a certain number of times. So what happens inside the for loop? Well, I actually do the shuffling that I've been saying I'm going to do. This is not the only way you can shuffle data in Python. You can also use some functions in NumPy like np.random.permutation, um, but I'm just gonna use .sample here to show you what that does. So I'm gonna take all of the flipper lengths and I'm gonna shuffle them by randomly sampling without replacement. So each time I'm grabbing a random flipper length and I'm just gonna keep doing it until I run out of flipper lengths. And now I have shuffled flipper lengths in this shuffled flippers here. Now I need to assign those shuffled flipper lengths a species. Right, so that I know what group is gonna be what and I know what to subtract. So I'm gonna make a new data frame that has all of my shuffled flippers here, flipper lengths, and then also has the species labels. Now notice I didn't change the species labels. I could have shuffled that as well, but since I shuffled flippers, they're already being all being assigned different random species. So it doesn't really matter if I shuffle both of them or shuffle one of them. I also could have chosen to shuffle the species labels instead of the flippers. As long as something is being shuffled, this is going to work. Because the idea is we want random labels assigned to flipper lengths. Now that we have that, I wanna look at the difference between my two groups. Now I've created a situation where there should be very little difference between the two groups because I've assigned groups randomly. But you'll see, I calculate this test statistic very similarly to the one that I did right up here, right? I'm just using a different data frame now. So I'm using shuffled DF instead. So I'm gonna look at all the newly assigned Gen 2 penguins, right? These might not actually be Gen 2 penguins, but that's what we're assigning them here because species doesn't matter under our null hypothesis. I'm gonna get the mean of their shuffled flipper lengths going to do the same thing here with my chinstrap penguins. And I'm going to append that test stat to my differences array. And I'm going to do this 5,000 times, get 5,000 of these differences. So now I can get a whole histogram of these differences, these test statistics under the null hypothesis. So that's what I've plotted here. This is my histogram. And then also here with this plt.scatter, I've added what my test statistic was. So remember my test statistic was the actual difference between Gen 2 and chinstrap flipper lengths. So this is what I saw in my data, this red dot over here. And this is what I see when I do simulations under the null hypothesis. So Assuming the null hypothesis is true, right? Assuming that this blue is true, it doesn't really look like this red dot comes from this null hypothesis, right? This is really far away. So it seems like this probably comes from a different distribution. Doesn't really look like it comes from the one that we simulated. Now let's go ahead and calculate a p-value just to show you how you would do that. So my test statistic is over here, right? And I wanna know, did I see any values under the null hypothesis that were more extreme than this red dot? 
Now, obviously the answer is no looking at this, but let's go ahead and look at the code just so you know how you would do it. So my p-value would look at the differences, right? Differences is the simulated test statistics under the null hypothesis. So how many times did I see a test statistic in differences that was greater than or equal to, right? More extreme than my test statistic out of all of the 5,000 times that I calculated something in differences. This is a sum of a Boolean, which means one is always treated as true and zero is treated as false in Python. So a sum of a bunch of zeros and ones is really just counting the number of ones. So it's counting the number of times we saw something equal to or more extreme. And it's gonna give me a probability or a proportion really here out of the 5,000 times. And we end up with a p-value of zero, which makes sense. We didn't see any test statistics under a null hypothesis that were that extreme. And even if we had done the two-sided alternative, right, the two-sided alternative would be more extreme in either direction. So usually you can kind of approximate that with a simulation like this by just doing two times the p-value. So two times zero is still zero. So we would reject the null hypothesis here. We're saying we're seeing something significantly different than what we would have seen if the null hypothesis was true. All right. So notice that I didn't even have to talk about a significance level yet. I said we can just reject the null. That's because zero is going to be smaller than any significance level you choose, right? Any logical significance level. Um, but usually people will choose something like 0 0.05 or 0 0.01. Zero is smaller, so we can reject the null. Let's do something a little bit less straightforward. Now let's bring in those Adeli penguins. Again, somebody please tell me in the comments how to pronounce this. And let's see if we can compare their body masses. So we're going to compare the body mass of Adeli and Chinstrap penguins. And based on what the data looked like, it seems like those Adeli penguins are probably, they're weighing less on average than the Chinstrap penguins. So I'm going to use this as a one-sided alternative hypothesis. First step is I always have to calculate my test statistics. So I'm looking at the average body mass, right? Average of body mass for all of the penguins that have species chinstrap. And I'm subtracting average body mass for all of the penguins that have species Adeli. And that gives me my test statistic. Then a lot of this code should look very familiar to you. It's very similar to what we did above. We're just changing some variable names and changing what species we're looking at. So now I'm going to look at all of the masses, all of the species labels, and I'm going to initialize my empty array where I can save everything. I'm still going to do my for loop 5,000 times. And inside my for loop, I'm going to use dot sample to shuffle all of the values in mass. So now I end up with a permuted array of masses. And then I can make my new shuffle data frame where now each of those masses is assigned a species label. So every mass that I had in there is now randomly assigned a species label because I've permuted them. This makes sure that species no longer really has any effect, right? Species are assigned arbitrarily. Then I can calculate my test statistic for this data set. So this is my null test statistic for this shuffled data. Notice it looks very similar to what I did up here. I'm still taking the mean of the mass. Now it's that shuffled mass for chinstrap penguins. Remember, these aren't really chinstrap penguins anymore. They're the ones that are now arbitrarily labeled chinstrap, but that's still our group one. And we're going to subtract our mean of mass for the other group, okay? Then that's our test statistic. We want to save that by appending it to differences so that we can end up with a whole array of 5,000 of these null test statistics, which allows us to look at the whole distribution. So here is our empirical distribution of our null test statistics. 
and I've put my test statistic on here in red. So this is the difference that I saw in my data. These are the differences that I might expect to see if there was no difference between the body mass of Chinstrap and Adelie penguins. Now notice, my red dot is a lot closer to the middle of this histogram than it was to the middle of this histogram, right? We're in a very different situation here. So now it seems like it might be pretty likely that this comes from this distribution, right? It's in this like higher portion of the distribution in where this mode is here. It's pretty close to the middle. And we know closer to the middle means larger p-value, right? More things in here. And it means more likely to have come from the null hypothesis, okay? So now it looks like it probably comes from the distribution of test statistics that assumed the null hypothesis was true. But let's check that p-value. So remember p-value, how many times under this null hypothesis? So how many of the test statistics in this blue distribution are as or more extreme than the test statistic we saw in our data. So how often do we see that under the null hypothesis? So we're gonna look at how many of the values and differences are greater than or equal to my test statistic. And then I'm gonna divide it by 5,000 to get the probability that this happens. And I end up with 0.3, so like a 30% probability here as my p-value. Now 0.3, 30%, is really not that small, right? It's actually fairly likely that I would see something like this if the null hypothesis were true. So I can't reject the null in this case. Usually we're going to be picking a significance level that's smaller than 0.3. I've never seen someone use one larger. So let's say it's something like 0 0.05, 0 0.3 is larger than 0 0.05, which means we cannot reject the null hypothesis. Notice I didn't say we accept the null hypothesis, and earlier I didn't say we accept the alternative hypothesis. In statistics, we never say that we accept. We always either reject or do not reject, because it's a lot easier to prove something false than it is to prove something true, right? We haven't said without a shadow of the doubt that this is true. We've just said we have some evidence against it. So right now we can't reject the null hypothesis. We don't have enough evidence to reject it. So we're not gonna reject it. We're gonna say that this probably came from the world where there's really not much difference. So we're gonna say, we don't really think that there's much of a difference between Adeli and Chinstrap Penguin's body mass, but we do think that there is a difference between Gen 2 and Chinstrap flipper lengths. All right, so there you have it. Those were two examples of how to conduct a permutation test in Python. Hopefully you noticed that a lot of it really has to do with simulation. And both of those simulations that we did had a very similar form, and that's gonna be similar for a lot of simulations and the permutation tests that you might do in the future. So hopefully this video helped you. If it did, please give it a like. It really helps out my channel. And feel free to put some comments below about things you found useful or other videos that you would like me to make that might help you. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.